smell it. Bro. Smell that stuff? Yeah. While we're warming it, it up? my grandma's house. I'm not even kidding. It smells good, though. Isn't that a good smell? It, smell, it smells like apples. Yeah. Like, yeah, like somebody's apple. baking Grandma's applesauce. Grandma's <laughs> All right, what are we thinking on this one? I say we go with the cosine squared. Okay, what would you make the cosine squared become? No. Wait, no. Wait, that's a good We have to use this stuff, I bet. I would make that 1 minus sine squared. I would make this 1 minus sine squared also. Shoot, that's not a good one. And then what? What would we do over here? No, because we're, we're solving. We're not proving. Because we've got three choices on this one. I'll wait. We done now? Okay. Yes, you. Yeah. Okay. So we've got three choices for cosine of 2x. Right? We've got cosine squared minus sine squared. We've got 2 cosine squared minus 1. And we've got 1 minus 2 sine squared. And so since we've made this whole left side be all sine squared, let's make this side become 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And now I've taken my problem and I've created it into a singleton trigonometric function problem. So now we can get everything onto one side, get it equal to zero. I'm going to add two sine squares of x. At the same time, I am going to subtract one. That gives me my new simplified equation of sine squared of x plus sine of x equals 0. Couldn't see the side before. So that people that aren't here because they're out with the coronavirus can actually still learn stuff. Okay. Now I would factor out a sine squared, or excuse me, a sine. That leaves me with sine plus one. So then sine of x equals zero. And sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Where is sine equal to 0? <laughs> what? <laughs> 0 and pi. 0 and pi? Okay. Where is sine equal to negative 1? 3 pi over 2. So the solutions to this one are those three. Because we learned it before. Because now we've got double angle formulas. I just didn't put two and two together. you got to use this whole page. Yeah, because today, I was like looking at these because today we're going to learn the last three. Oh my goodness. Bro, those are not fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So today we're going to focus in on the half angles. Okay. So it's another way to get exact identities. Uh, the sine, the sine one. So this is identity uh, number twenty-four here. This is identity number twenty-five. And the tangent one is number 26. Okay. So we'll be referencing those throughout. Okay. Now, notice that there are unresolved plus or minuses here and here. Okay. So it's going to depend upon where your angle is if that is positive or negative. Okay. So for instance, if I wanted to find the cosine of 105 degrees, okay, that's going to be a negative cosine value because it's up here in quadrant number two. Okay. So that means that my cosine value up there would have the negative sign in front of the big square root. Okay. Whereas if I was finding the cosine of 15 degrees, that's in quadrant 1, cosine's positive there, so it would have a positive sign in front. Not plus or minus, you've got to pick which one depending upon where your angle lies. Okay. Tangent doesn't have that. It's got, you've got a third one at the very bottom right corner of your identities, which has a, a square root. That one has the, the plus or minus on it, but no one's ever really going to use that one. You're going to use one of these two first. Okay? All right? So, let's try this. Let's try, let's find the sine of 15 degrees. And I want to find it exact. Okay. Yesterday, we found it using sum and angle formulas. Okay. We could find it using double angle formulas if we wanted to. <coughs> I don't know why we would, because we'd have to double 7.5 degrees, which we don't have either. Okay. But the sine of 15 degrees is equal to the sine of 30 degrees divided by 2. <coughs> the sine formula that we would be using, the half angle formula, sine of u over 2 is equal to plus or minus big square root 1 minus cosine of u divided by 2. 15 degrees. Does that have a positive sign or a negative sign value? Positive. So this is going to end up being positive big square root 1 minus cosine of 30 degrees all divided by 2. Since it's positive, we don't have to write it anymore. We don't write plus 3 on, on things, so we don't have to write plus on this one. Okay. What is the cosine at 30 degrees? Square root 3 over 2? Yep. So all of that is inside of a radical. Okay. If I want to simplify the numerator, what do I have to do? Or what do I have to have? Common denominators. What would my common denominator be? 2. So 
my numerator is 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2. Agree? That is still being divided by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same as what? Multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So this would be multiplied here by 1 half, which would get me... 1, oops, excuse me, pardon me, not 1, 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 4. Nope, because we divided by, a, we multiplied by a half, which is the same as dividing by 2. This one? Because that's what you told me to do from here. Yeah. Square roots with fractions inside. What's the rule? Square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So this, then, is... The square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 all over the square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. Dividing by 2 we said is the same as multiplying by 1 half, correct? Okay. So this was, we were doing the sine of 15 degrees is equal to positive one-half times the square root of two minus the square root of three. Yes, I just dropped a square root inside of a square root. Because they don't cancel each other out. Yep, so it's, uh, so it's dividing by it. 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Mm -hmm. yep. Good times. Let's, let's throw it into radian form. Cosine of pi over 8. Well, pi over 8 is pi over 4 divided by 2. Cosine formula. Is that so? This is one plus. Oops, tap the break to make myself some more space. One plus the cosine of pi over four divided by two. Pi over eight. 
which quadrant is pi over 8 in? First quadrant? Cosine positive or negative in first quadrant? Positive. So this is just going to be positive there. What is the cosine value at pi over 4? Simplify the numerator. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So the cosine of pi over 8 is equal to positive 1 half times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. Tangent of 7 pi over 12. Okay. My tangent formula has, oops, has 2 to choose from. On your sheet it has 3, but really we're not going to choose that, that ugly square root one, right? Okay. Which one do you want to use? Which one looks easier to use? One minus cosine over sine. Okay. Tangent of seven pi over twelve then is the same as the tangent of 7 pi over 6 divided by 2. So this would be 1 minus the cosine of 7 pi over 6 divided by the sine of 7 pi over 6. Cosine at 7 pi over 6. Negative root 3 over 2. So this really becomes 1 plus sine. 
sine at 7 pi over 6. Dividing by negative one-half, multiplying by negative two, That 7 pi over 12 is equal to then uh, negative 2 minus the square root of 3. For the next seven minutes, I would like you to work on the other three problems that are on that pink sheet. 